Uh, yep, I guess I'm a liar. What you're gonna do? Hey, that that new haircut looks just looks great. It looks great. Just kidding. Uh, so I'm gonna explain proton to proton or H1 to H1 coupling. This is something I could have done earlier, huh? Before the carbon NMR coupling, but doesn't matter. As long as we learn it. If any two atoms are close enough and both have nuclei with spin, they can potentially couple. I say potentially, you'll see why that is later. We've looked at carbon-13 to hydrogen coupling. Now we'll focus on in on a <clears throat> hydrogen to hydrogen coupling. So let's study this molecule first. This is an easy one. 1,1-dibromo-2-chloroethanes one, one dibromo 2 chloroethanes coupling. Here's the molecule. It's got two hydrogen groups, one, which is a two hydrogen doublet because it has just one hydrogen neighbor there. And that's what it looks like. Let's, let's talk about that one first. So that two hydrogen double, doublet, it has the one hydrogen neighbor, which I've drawn in. And that neighbor can be alpha spin state, <clears throat> give you the more downfield part of the doublet. Or it can be a beta spin state, and give you the more upfield part of the doublet. Simple, right? One neighbor, n plus one rule, doublet, done. That was easy. Wait, can you trust me? I'm a liar. Well, there's one other thing. Some of you may have thought of this. What about coupling to the carbon-13 atoms in the molecule and bromine and bromines? Can we couple to those and the chlorines? Why aren't we talking about that? Okay, okay, I'll come clean. We don't see the carbon-13 coupling because there's so little of it. Most carbons are carbon-12. It's like 98% of the carbon atoms are carbon-12. And carbon-12 has no spin and no spin states. So it will not couple with any other atoms. Only about 1% of the carbons are carbon-13, which has spin and can couple. But there's so little of it, only like 1%, that... Uh, you don't see the splitting. The, so I'll show you what I mean. The, trust me, there's, they're down here, but just too small to see. So see that, see that little singlet guy right there? It could be split again into a doublet, that part, by the carbon-13s, but there's so few of them that we don't see it. It's like down in the baseline here. Um, I think the coupling constant is pretty big too, so it's probably way out wide, but it's tiny, so you don't really notice it, so we we don't observe it. Trust me. Wh whoops. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the slideshow. So you see Pinocchio's nose. So you can trust me, right? Uh-oh. Just kidding. I think that is true. Okay, so now bromine and chlorine are really interesting. Both have spin. They both have spins like carbon-13 and like the H1 isotope. Bromine's in a cool one. It, it has two main isotopes, 79 and 81, and they're in about equal amounts. We're going to talk more about these when we go into mass spectroscopy. You have like 51% abundance of bromine-79 and about 49% abundance of bromine-81. And they each have a spin of three halves. That's kind of weird, huh? It's not a half like hydrogen and carbon. Um, and chlorine, uh, it, it has two isotopes, 35 and 37. Um, I think chlorine 35 is the more abundant. I think there's like 75% of that, and like 25% of 37. Could be the other way around. Look it up. But anyways, they each of these isotopes of chlorine have a spin of three halves. But they do not show coupling to hydrogen or carbon, 13. Uh, why is that? Well, when the bromine and chlorine atoms are excited by a radio wave, they relax back down to their lower energy spin state very quickly. So it's almost like they're never excited. They're almost they're just about always in their lower energy spin state. They relax much quicker than a proton or a um, carbon-13 nuclei. And so they relax down so fast, it's basically like all of them are in their lowest energy spin state all the time. When a hydrogen and a carbon-13 
has a bromine or chlorine near them, they just about always are in their lower spin states, the bromine and chlorines. So in the example above, when the hydrogens of the two hydrogen doublet look over at the chlorine, they don't see it in two different spin states like we saw like alpha or beta for the hydrogen neighbors. They just pretty much always see that chlorine in its lowest energy spin state and just one spin state. So if you only see it in one spin state, the lower energy spin state, uh, then if, you're, if they're all in their lower energy spin state, you don't have multiple, you don't have multiple combos like the other examples. Like this one you had, a, you can have it at alpha or beta. And if there were two neighbors, you have like alpha, alpha combo, alpha, beta, beta, alpha, beta, beta, you know, all that. But if your neighbor is just always in the one spin state, then it's just, you only see it as one way, and uh, you're a singlet with no coupling. Nice, huh? Bromine also relaxes very fast and is basically always in its lower energy spin state, so you don't see its coupling either, because when you look over, when these hydrogens look over this bromine, it's like, what state is this bromine in? Oh, it's in the lower energy. That's in the lower energy spin state, so it's just seeing one combination of things. Uh, chlorine and bromine are thought to be self-decouplers. They self-decouple themselves. Wait, I just talked about decoupling. Maybe I'm not a liar. I'm a real honest boy. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Okay, so, so I'm a real honest boy. Did you notice? Boom, his nose grew. Yeah, so I said I would talk about decoupling X, and I kind of am, right? But I didn't know I would, but maybe... Uh, I don't know if I'm a liar or not. I'm totally lost now. <laughs> now let's study the other signals. The the 1H triplet. This guy over here. It's a one hydrogen triplet because it has two hydrogen neighbors next door. N plus one rule. Two hydrogen neighbors. Two plus one. Three triplet. So here it is. Uh, it can have alpha alpha con combination, right, of those neighbors. Or it could have a beta alpha, or it can have the alpha beta, the switching of those two. And finally, it can have a beta beta. And so, wait a minute, it's supposed to be a triplet. There's four combos here. That's right, the two in the middle are equivalent. So it's only three unique combinations. So yep, we get the most downfield Part of the triplet caused by the alpha alpha spin state and then the middle tallest one has uh, two possibilities alpha beta beta alpha and the most upfield is going to be the beta beta so we got it huh again not enough carbon 13 to worry about so it won't couple it will couple the hydrogens but it'll there's so little of it that that those signals are tiny they're lost in the baseline and the chlorine and the bromine are always chill. They're always in their, pretty much always in their lowest energy spin state. So they don't couple it. We don't see their coupling and it's self decouples, we call it. You can trust me. Oh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, okay, now back to the spectroscopy intro. Almost done. This is getting good now, right? I hope you're liking it. Why are you always lying? Just kidding. I hope you do like it.